Hey guys, this is Pankaj from journaldev.com. In this video, we will look into builder design pattern. So builder design pattern is one of the creational design pattern. So it deals with how an object is being created. So in my earlier videos, we looked into factory and abstract factory design pattern and builder design pattern tries to solve some of the shortcoming of factory and abstract factory design pattern. So let's look when do we want to use builder design pattern in our application. So when to use builder pattern. So whenever a class has too many variables and if many of them have the same data types, so what happens is using a constructor or a factory pattern becomes confusing for client programs. Why? Because you have to very sure that you are passing the correct parameter at correct location because Java doesn't support named parameters. So it creates confusion for client programs. Another problem with factory is that, let's say if some of the variables are optional. So what will happen that the client program will have to unnecessarily pass null argument for all those factory methods. Again, if the class instance creation is very heavy and complex, so all those complexity you will have to copy over to a factory class method also. So that is not a good pattern why because if anything changes in this uh, instance creation, again you will have to do the change in your class as well as in the factory class method also. So let's uh, go over to my Eclipse where I'll show you how to implement builder pattern step by step. So guys, this is my Eclipse and uh, I have a sample class computer here and uh, it has three required parameters that has to be set and then it has two optional parameters. So let's see how we would implement builder pattern here. So first of all, in builder pattern, we have to use a builder class to create the concrete class. So what it means that for all these parameters, we should not create any setter methods. We should only have getter methods. So let's first create getter methods for these uh, variables. So I'll go to source, generate getter and setters. I'll just say select getters. So no setters are created and I just say OK. So all the getter methods are created. Now, next step is to create the builder class. So builder class has to be a static class and it has to be the nested class so that it can use the private constructor of computer class. Now, why do we want to have a private constructor for computer is so that the only way to create an instance of computer is through builder. So let's first create the builder class inside computer class. So I'll say public static class builder. So the next step is since we are using builder class to create computer and set all the variables. So we will have to copy all the variables from computer class to the builder class. Now the next step is to create a constructor for builder where the argument should be all the required parameters. Why? Because anyway we have to set these parameters. So it's better to set them via a constructor. So I'll say public builder string CPU. So now my constructor is ready. So the next step is to provide methods to set the optional parameters. So I'll just create setter methods for these two optional variables. So I'll go to generate getter and setters and here for these two variables I'll just say select setter and I'll say OK. So the setter methods are created. Now we have to change the setter methods to return the instance of builder. 
so that we can use it one by one so that is very simple to do all I have to do is change the return type from void to builder and say return this now the final step for builder class is to provide a method that will be used to get the instance of computer usually this method is named as build so this will return computer and here we will use the computer constructor and we will pass builder instance Notice that Eclipse is giving error. Why? Because this constructor is undefined. So I'll just say create this constructor. So this constructor is created. Let's go ahead and set all the variables here. So I have made all the changes in computer constructor. Right now it is public. So let's just change it to private. So now our builder pattern is implemented. So let's see in a client program how we will create the computer. So I'll say computer new dot builder and here first of all we will have to pass the required parameters and we'll say build so this will give me a very basic computer now what if we want to enable the graphics card so what we will have to do is before build we will call the setter method for enabling graphics card That's it. So in this way, we can get all the variation of computer through this builder class. The default is where we are just setting the required parameters. And then we get the variation by setting all the optional parameters. So in this way, you get the complete computer instance only through builder and by setting all the parameters. So at no point your computer is in an inconsistent state. So this is where builder pattern is very very helpful. So before I conclude this uh, video, I want to go through the builder pattern definition provided on Wikipedia. So if you see Wikipedia page on builder pattern, here the definition is slightly different. It's almost similar where we have a complex object and we have different way to create different parts and then we have a director and this director is responsible for getting the concrete object. So let's go to the Java implementation example to see how it is implemented. So we have a car just like our computer. Then this car builder is the interface and it has this implementation which provides the way to create a car and here the setter methods are there to set color and wheels. Finally this director is where you can create a car and it has this construct method that is being called in the client program to get the car instance. Now what I don't like in this way of implementation is that if you implement your car builder like this you can only get one variation of the car for example this car builder director can give you only a red car so let's say if you want to have 10 different colors so you will have to create 10 different directors such as red 
car build director, black car build director, purple car build director like that. So rather than going via this way and create a separate abstraction with all these 10 different classes, what I would do is I would actually create a new class here and let's say I'll call it computer builder director and here I'll provide different methods to create a computer such as public computer get basic computer and here I'll say return new basic computer then I can provide different variation for example let's say get graphics card enabled computer so here I'll say add another function to enable the graphics card so rather than having 10 different classes I would rather create one director and provide all the different methods based on the different type of computer we want. Let's go through the final thoughts on builder design pattern before I conclude this video. So these are the final thoughts on builder pattern. So builder pattern is useful in creating objects with many optional parameters. If you have only one or two optional parameters then it doesn't make much sense. Again, it's to avoid the possibility of using an object in inconsistent state. So if you are using setter to set all the variables and if it is a multi-threaded environment or even in a single threaded environment, let's say you have to set 20 variables. So chances are that you might miss one and it can left your object in an inconsistent state and can cause issues. But there are certain drawbacks with builder pattern. First of all, it, it creates a lot of redundant code. The same code is copied over to builder class and anytime you want to make any change in the concrete class, you will have to do the same change in builder class as well. If it is a required parameter, then you will have to change the client classes as well. And as you can see clearly, builder is part of computer so there is no code reusability at all so these are the final thoughts on builder pattern so use it only where you see that it provides you actual benefits over factory pattern otherwise i would go over factory pattern rather than builder pattern it's better to know it but use it wisely when you have a compelling reason to use builder pattern so please like and share the video with others and also subscribe to my channel so that you get instant notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you. Bye.